I see. Okay. Hey, everybody. It is Tuesday night, um, June 27th. It's 8.35 p.m. We're going to be together for the next 35 minutes. We promise to keep it to one call and not two tonight. And I promise to record the whole thing so you get all the content, unlike June 5th. So this is our follow-up call to our um, call earlier this month where myself, Kayla Troutman, director here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, and um, Miss Carissa, the lovely uh, senior team leader from uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. We led a call earlier this month on sales and recruiting. We each have different strengths, I will say, in business. And um, we work really well together. So we've been able to network and grow our businesses together. And now we want to share that with you guys. So the first thing we're going to start with tonight, and Carissa and I are going to bounce off of each other for a few minutes, is we don't think it's a good idea to start a call with ideas for July until we wrap up kind of the thoughts that we had shared from earlier this month and make sure we really help you guys apply them. Otherwise our training is null and void. Like if we're just training you guys and giving you a ton of words and a ton of information, but nobody's actually putting that into play. Um, I don't want to say there's not a point to it, but there's really not. So um, the first question we had for you guys is who was on the first call or watch the playback. If you're live, like will you raise your hand or say I was or something? Did anybody um, get on live or watch the playback? I think Tabitha was. Sonia, you weren't. That's okay. Um, Jessica, you're brand new, so you wouldn't have been. Lauren, did you? I don't okay, I'm, not, I'm not calling anybody out in a negative way. I'm just curious. I think Tabitha's muted. I can see she's muted, but I think she was. And I don't know the three phone number who three phone numbers who's on. If you're on the phone, if you want to share, was anybody on the last call? Mm. Awesome. Tabitha's saying I was. Yay. Okay. So really quick, um, we went through. Carissa shared how she has like amazing, she's not going to take credit, like $6,000, $8,000 in sales every month. Like her sales are extremely consistent. And I am stronger in the recruiting area just by nature. And it's very interesting because when we sit across the room from each other, like we did yesterday, it's so neat to just hear our natural tendencies, right? You all have natural tendencies in this business, whether you realize it or not. Um, so we want to know, okay, I guess I'm talking to Tabitha. Tabitha, I know you're listening. Was it helpful? And what'd you take away from it? And would you tell all these people that didn't check it out to go back and check it out? I wish this was coffee. I just like the taste better. That's all. A tea's like, meh. Does she comment that? Oh no, she didn't say anything yet. It was helpful. Okay, cool. If you want to type, Tabitha, if you're able to, something that you took away from it specifically, and then you type in capital letters that all these people should go check it out. Okay. <laughs> Tabitha is the best. I know her well, so I can say that. Isn't her a headshot pretty? Um, okay, oh, Krista, what did you want to add off of the last call? I know you had some thoughts. Well, I, I was wondering too, just off the well, that I'm glad it was helpful, but then I was just kind of wondering if anyone took action after the last call. And if you did, if you could share an example of either one of the um, strategies that we gave, like what did you do that, you know, what did you take away from the call? Did you do anything just like, oh, okay, and then just moved on? Or did you actually take action to it? So while Tabitha's typing, because I'm guessing she's in a place where she can't talk, um, I'll share my takeaway. So I'm not super strong in sales. And I finished out May really disappointed in my um, attitude that I had had in May because I kind of got, I got burned by a couple of hostesses, right? Lauren, you were just saying like, nobody showed up for a Facebook party. I had that. And then I had two cancellations and we were on the incentive trip and I like played a pity party. I played victim, right? I totally went in the triangle and I was like, oh my gosh, poor me. I worked so hard all year long. I'm just going to let May be like, yeah. Well, then when I got my paycheck and I saw my total numbers, I was like, that kind of stinks. And so what I took away from Carissa was like, even on the days that she doesn't want to do the follow-up and some of that work that creates reorders and stuff, she just does it, right? Like she's got four kiddos. I didn't give her a proper um, introduction. She's got four kiddos and one is three months old and the rest are like ranging in ages of crazy, crazy, and crazier, like seriously. So mm -hmm. um, I got to see them yesterday. They're so cute and so polite. She's such a great mama. So she mothers her children in such a great way, and yet she still gets it done. And so uh, my action was like, what are you doing? Like, you're just literally making excuses. Like you have the same amount of time as Carissa. We all have the same amount of time. So this month I'm happy to report I'm going for $5,000 in sales. I haven't had a $5,000 month in months. 
and I should hit it. I hope I'm working really hard at it, but it's just like incredible because that's double what I did last month. That's how dramatically I needed to change my attitude. So, I mean, it's literally just like doing the work. That's all I changed. I just stopped having the pity party and did it. So that's my takeaway. And oh, tell, oh go ahead, Chris. And then Tabitha did answer those us. Those that don't know Kayla, she has an 18 month old Macaulay who does not sit well on my chairs at my house and likes to climb steps a lot and fell a few times and fed my dog like an eight course meal. So <laughs> um, <laughs> it's super cute. But um, so she's got an 18 month old married to Nate and she's, she's rocking and rolling um, with her wild trip business, obviously just promoting to director. So what I took away from Kayla last week, last time we chatted about the recruiting piece, because I'm not as strong at the recruiting piece, it was just having that no fear and just asking, like just having the conversation and just asking, not being like, Oh, I don't know if I should say that to her. Oh, I don't know if, Oh, she's, Oh, she's not ready for this. I'm not going to even talk to her, but just like, making myself have the conversation and um having and being intentional about it every single week not just um i tend to wait till like one day like this today seems like a good day to see if people want to join my team and but now i'm being a little bit more intentional like every week okay i'm going to talk to x y and z and then you know this week and then i'm going to follow up next week and um having that mindset that I am a good recruiter. So we'll talk about self -aff affirmations, but saying to myself, I am, I can recruit, not, I can't, oh, they don't want to, but having that positive, positive mindset has helped. Um, I've recruited two so far this month um, and have like three that are still on the fence about pulling the trigger too. So, I mean, yes, last month was big fat zero. So Yay, Sonia is celebrating. Yeah, it's it's fun to see progress. So even we, I guess the message we want to want to start this next segment now with is our tips for July. Every person's got to make this business their own. And Chris and I are not telling you to work it just like us. No. But we're telling you to hear what we're saying and not just sit and listen to it because we want to keep these calls going. If you guys find these helpful, we are we are loving it. But we want you to take it. Yay, Sonia says yes. But we want you to take it and we want you to put it into use somehow. So figure out tonight what we say, where you're, what you're going to, write down. I mean, I recommend you write down our key phrases for all top 10 tips for July. And then at the end of this call, we're going to give you a call of action and oh, whoever's on the phone, you, you have some background noise. Can you guys mute yourselves? If you have iPhones, you can just hit mute. And if you don't, I think you can do star six. Thank you. It's gone. Whoever it was, it's gone. Um, but we're going to give you a call of action at the end and we're going to give you the date of our next call to do some follow-up. Okay. We're going to give you several weeks to work on this. Um, but like, it's just so important that you take action. And so even myself, like I'm, I was totally guilty of not doing some of the steps. And I see Tabitha said, I have been following up more leading to more bookings. And I would not have followed up with those people or had those bookings if I didn't do the follow-up. So like for her, that is where she knows she's going to meet more people to then you guys get more sales to then you guys share the opportunity more. Like we need to be in front of people. So awesome. Okay. Carissa, do you want to start us off with our topic tonight? Well, so to, we decided that, um, you know, cause with summer July, I mean, you know, it's the 4th of July and there's things happening. So when you, when you kind of take a seat back and there's a lot going on, people are camping and there's weddings and like, I'm in the same boat. Um, so we're, we wanted to kind of give you some top, like top 10 tips on what you can do um, to kind of move your business, keep your business moving forward. So not taking a seat back for July, because then what, what will happen is come August and September, which is the busiest time with Wild Tree, August, September, October, like that is the busiest people, you know, we have the highest amount of sales then. Um, if you take July off, your whole fall is going to just crumble. Um, and two, I, and I'm, I'm just kind of getting ahead of myself, but um, with July, um, you know, obviously you probably heard from, if you're on Kayla's team and my team, about the app coming out. So we want you to be full aware of what's happening and we want your people to be aware of you. Like they want, I want, you know, like Lauren's customers, they hear Wild Tree, I want them to thank Lauren for their, for their go-to. So um, we just came up with some top 10 tips some um so we're gonna have like a, if you just want to ca catch um the catchphrase for each one and we're gonna kind of go back and forth and then at the end 
if there's questions or you're not sure of like how to, you know, what do you mean by this type thing? So we're going to open it up, but then we'll kind of um, wrap things up. So um, I'm going to start with the first one. Um, customer interface is our first tip. So what does that mean? Um, all of us, like I said, all of us want to have a customer base. All of us want to be, we want loyal customers. We want those people coming back to us. We want to build that relationship. We want to take care of um, those customers. So the, I want, you know, when Susie Q needs more or needs more product or wants a freezer meal or wants, I want her to think, hear Wild Tree and think, Krissa, I'm calling Krissa. I know my cousin's best friend's neighbor sells it, but I want Krissa. So um, we want you to uh, send a customer email. So um, send out customer emails every month to your team or to your um, customers and um, be in front of your customers. So some of you might just um, rely on the Perfect Blend newsletter to take care of your customer emails um but we suggest doing a, a personal email as well just to keep th that personal touch because i mean i get so many emails with like 31 and Norway and all this and it's just this automated generated thing that i just kind of like delete 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 so um for the first tip is customer interface sending up out personal um customer emails every month and being intentional about it yes okay my turn Okay, number two, I was taking some extra notes here, and I'll try to post notes with the playback, too, that Krista, you can then share. Number two is group or page is the catchphrase. And what we're going for here, um, many of you are in my customer group. I call it um, Kayla's Recipe Club Wild Tree Style, and anybody, you're welcome to join me, but don't add your customers here. We want you to create a Facebook page or a Facebook group. Wild Tree is still torn as far as the training goes that I just received at the director's retreat. They would actually like us all to have a page and a group, but we're not, Chris and I are not training that yet because we just think that's a lot. If you don't have anything right now to add a page and a group and have your personal page and maybe you're in a bunch of other groups, that's a lot. So I want you to take away number two, group or page get a wild tree group or page going and be intentional about posting recipes what's going on in your life here's my here's my way to help you balance every week you should be talking in some regard about um, booking events try not to use the word booking try just to use opening up your house earning free dollars free organic groceries whatever it is but you need to be posting at least once a week about events once a week about the business opportunity. And that can be like my team leader, Jess Schultz this morning, shared this great post standing outside of her house in front of a brand new vehicle they bought with cash. Sonia's saying, yeah, she saw it. Um, what a cool story to tell. My, my team leader saved enough money that when they're beater and they had a true beater, no heat, no AC, no fuel gauge. I mean, it is a beater and it was going to die. And so they bought a used vehicle cash today, yesterday. Um, and they were able, she was able to stand outside with her dream board. Do you know how many likes and comments and attention that got today? Genius marketing for your business. And that's not a lie. That was truly something important to her heart. So every week you need to have something like that. Or you sitting at your desk, like I do sometimes on a Monday with the Wild Tree website up in the background, um, advertising that you do this for a living. And then every day you need to be having a recipe, information about a product, what you're cooking in your kitchen. Sonia's great at that. She always puts a personal touch on it. That's what we want you to take as number two. Why is that important? Because it's another way to do number one, which is interface with your customers. And it's going to be a great place to share that app fast when it goes live. Now, I think where most people make a mistake is they throw these groups out and they only post about booking. They only post sales, free shipping deals. F that, okay? Sorry to be so blunt, but that is not what you're doing in your group. The best thing I ever did was September 1st, start a recipe club on a whim because I had seen some blogger that I followed do this. And she shared a recipe a day for 30 days. And she went from like 5,000 followers to like 500,000 followers. People want that. They want you to teach them how this is valuable to them. Why would they want to be in this business? Don't just keep telling them the kits for $50. They don't care. They don't care. What they want to know is what it does for you long term. Sonia can make biscuits with coconut oil like nobody's mother, and she makes sure everybody knows it on her page. Like, and she likes tzatziki, like or however you say it. I'm probably not even saying it right because she's a Yahoo. Oh, she froze. That's like the bottom two screens froze. Do you see that?
can, is anyone here? I can still see you, Carissa. Yeah, I can still see you too. And I could hear you too. This is Amanda, I'm on the phone and I can hear you guys. Oh, well, what the heck? Okay, she's getting her phone fixed, okay. Oh, there she is. I have no idea what happened, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, I literally was talking and my whole phone shut down. Like Apple phone went blank, even though I have plenty of battery life. So I have no idea what just happened. Um, okay, so bottom line is, everybody can hear, shake your head if you can hear, Sonia, somebody, yeah, okay, good, okay. Um, bottom line is, run a successful place where people can interface with you, they trust you, they, they see you post about online events, and maybe Lauren shares something like, and this is for future use, Lauren, but sometimes I'll say like, oh, I had a cancellation, or I had a postponement, or to replace the event that you tried to do tonight. And um, it's a great opportunity for, see, I wonder if everybody's having this happen, because now everyone's dropping off one by one. My phone literally shut down. So if that happens to you, I have no idea. Um, anyway, that's number two, is have a page or group where you're gonna regularly interface with your customers. Okay, Carissa? Okay, I'm, she, okay. Um, okay, number three is events. So um, now events are important obviously so we talk you know we talk about the groups and we talk about um fa facebook pages and things like that for you know talking about bookings and people joining our team however events are still important um so while a lot of us do a lot of online parties you know with facebook and catalog parties and things like that um we still feel that you um need to have those event like in-home parties so um, get creative. So maybe it's not just a tasting or just a workshop, just a wild tree party. So I'm gonna share a couple of things that I did this month that helped um, with, with June and double host and everything like that. And I'm um, had one of my highest months in sales this month. Um, so I offered something called like a complimentary tasting. So what I, and this was in my group, this was all done in my group. I did um, guess how many jelly beans are in the jar. So this I did around Easter for June because I was trying to plan ahead. It was just having a baby and I was like freaking out about June because I'm a huge planner. So that's just the way my mind works. So April, you know, June's um, far away and I'm like, I got to book June. Um, so I did um, guess how many jelly beans are in the jar. The closest person earns, um, wins a con complimentary tasting from me. So what that looks like, um, if I'll just quickly go through this, you can ask me for any questions afterwards. Um, I shared with Kayla too. So, um, literally I had it this past Saturday and I put on, uh, a dinner, a Greek taco dinner, a dessert and another side. And she, the host brought in her guests and then I served mimosas and things like that. Um, you know, so it's kind of like a tasting, but I, I focus more just on how to menu plan versus like my normal tasting uh, workshop type spiel that I give. Um, and I collected several hundred dollars in orders and um, have a couple of bookings lined up for fall from that. And it was at my house, which is nice. I mean, with kids, I have four kids. So um, it was nice not having to leave my house. I could just make everything right there. So that's an idea. Um, there's the fundraiser idea. Now I know some, some people might think, oh, fundraiser, I don't know if I want to do that, but it is an option. It is something else that you can offer your, your customers other than just, hey, book a workshop, book a workshop. I mean, people get like, I'm leaving this group because this lady's crazy. So um, like, how else can you help those customers that you're in front of. Um, so I did a fundraiser this year or this month um, for one of my best friends for the Ronald McDonald house. And um, we had over a thousand dollar fundraiser. It was on, it was two weeks all on Facebook and guess who got the double host credit? $433 in host credit. So, um, and she earned $400. I gave her for, um, um, for the fundraiser. So, um, those are just a couple of different ideas. Um, we try to keep the events um, 
try to keep the events going. I mean, I know you can run a lot of things in your group and social media and Instagram and whatever, but to really keep building your business, we suggest um, um, still holding events to kind of get that personal connection. Yeah. And I just want to quickly say we get frustrated, like we get how you're frustrated sometimes in the summer. We get cancellations. We understand low attendance, but your efforts are never wasted. Whenever somebody's canceling on you or postponing, something else is being put in your path. I promise. Your consistent efforts path. And that's number four. Your work today is what you're going to harvest tomorrow. Or you're watering your crops right now in summer for what Carissa said, your biggest fall and winter yet. To be honest, the only time I have a slow patch is April and May typically. And April for me was fine. It was May then. I just didn't keep up the consistency. So please, please, please know that then I felt the effects moving into this month and I've had to work three times harder because I missed out on three groups of people that I didn't meet that I was planning on meeting in May. So that's anywhere from let's say low end three to four people a party to higher end 10 to 12. I, that's my average. I hope your guys' is higher. That'd be even more awesome, but I didn't meet those people. So that could be like 35 or 40 people that I didn't meet last month or at least 15 people that I couldn't ask to book. I didn't sell anything to. I didn't ask to join my team. So lack of effort means lack of crop basically to harvest in the future. So please know your work today pays off. But back to number three, we understand that you can be frustrated, but events are where it's at. Wild Tree's not going to leave events altogether. I can tell you new things are coming. There's going to be different ways to earn income and, and more social media stuff and help with Facebook parties. And this app is going to be incredible. I, I can't tell you anything else. I had to sign up a non-disclosure, but, but I can tell you that um, it's going to be epic, epic, but you still are going to have to have events. They're not totally going away from that business model because what we find is once you get in and you get to know somebody, those are the people that join your team a year later or two years later or rehost for you thousand dollar parties, thousand dollar fundraisers. So just again, be consistent because you're going to harvest, you're going to get the crop here come later this year or next year. You have to be working now. You can't always be putting it off, I guess. Um, okay, Carissa, go ahead. Okay, so I like the next one. Is this is my favorite one. So attitude, number five, write that down. Um, so stop having those self limitations. So I, I, I am guilty of this. I know that. I mean, I think I was just saying it today to Kayla. So and she's like, okay, stop because you are good at this and you are good at that. So um, having those stop, you know, those, those self limitations. So like, I can't, I won't. I won't ever, I won't ever sell a thousand dollars at a party. I won't ever recruit while Kayla recruits. I won't book that many parties. Yeah. If you say that you're right, you're not going to at all. So I would just give yourself a gut check and just stop, just stop that all together. Um, you, you know, you're not, if you don't get results right away, it doesn't mean throw in the towel and quit. You're just like Kayla said that much closer to the next yes or the next booking or the next teammate. Um, but you have to keep that positive attitude. You have to not give up. It is hard. If it was easy, we'd have a bazillion wild tree reps all over the place. Um, so it's hard. It is, but you can't, you have to have that self, um, self talk, you know, in the morning, I am smart. I can book five parties. I can recruit two people. I will, um, make my 2000 goal. I will promote to team leader and start having those, um, just start saying those in the morning when you wake up at lunch before bed. I mean, practice it with your kids. I mean, how, how, how many times, you know, say, you know, for example, one of your kiddos is like, I want to play t-ball. Oh, we're not t-ball people. Well, you don't even know that you just kind of just assume that. And now your kid thinks, okay, I'm not a t-ball person. So, you know, um, just having that right attitude and having, um, you know, you can, you can change the world. So you just have to change your mindset and have that positivity um, that you can do what, exactly what you want to do. Yeah. And if it's hard to start with yourself, I had to record a video this morning, something else for conference that they're working on. And it, it needed to be our kids saying affirmations, but the truth be told Macaulay's not talking a lot yet at 18 months. So I recorded what we say to him. And I was telling Carissa about this yesterday. We say things to him. I'm going to get choked up. Like, um, you are kind, you share your toys, you know, Jesus, you are loved. 
Um, you know, you're a nice little boy that listens. Like, you know, we tell him these things. So someday he believes them and he knows he's handsome and he's trustworthy and he's intelligent and he's, um, going to do big things and great things with his life. And I would just tell you, if it's hard for you to start, start with your kids. Do you want your kids, if you have children to look down and always be thinking the negative, do you want them to live a life where they live minimal? Like, I mean, they only think like what's right in front of them, that that's the only job they can get, that this is all they can do. I don't know about you, but that alone is motivation to just get it together for myself and get rid of the doubts and the fears. Um, number six is your definition of work. Creating an invite or a Facebook post does not create success. What creates success is, is the intentional work I do each day. It's what I do behind the scenes. It's what Carissa does behind the scenes. So just really quick, a quick reminder. Work for me is income producing activities um, or critical success factors, depending what you've been trained on in the past, if anything. Income producing activities are not sharing recipes in my group. Although I just told you that's important and it is, that actually doesn't produce me immediate income. What does is reaching out to customers, placing orders, sending out invoices, um, coach, coaching hostesses, not creating the event and making sure all the posts are so pretty with personalized graphics. Oh, I don't even care about the graphics, to be honest. If you know me, it's way more about what I'm telling that hostess to send out and do behind the scenes. And I do a lot of interface with my hostesses and I've got four $500 parties to close yet this month. I mean, that's crazy. Like, and I, they're just getting it. They're getting it. They're getting outside orders. They're doing what I'm asking them to do. So that's income producing work, sharing the business opportunity, like Carissa was saying, intentionally, that stuff pro produces income. So make sure you have your definition of work correct. Okay, Carissa, we have about eight yeah. minutes left that we can talk. Okay. Um, and then we'll just come back on for questions. Yeah. Okay. So don't quit. It, so number seven is don't quit for your catch, your catch word. Don't quit. So, um, like I said earlier, if you, if it gets hard and you just feel like, you know, this isn't for me I, on my team, I posted like that life of an entrepreneur, you know, Oh, this is great. Oh, it sucks. No, I suck. Oh, life is awesome. Oh no, I'm not good at this. You know, so don't quit. It's not going to be rainbows and sunshine every day. I was talking to Kayla um, earlier on this month about, I'm like, I have like three parties canceled. I got this. She's like, Oh, this happens too. And I'm like, Yes, it happens to me. It happens. To, a lot of things happen to me, but I don't give up and I don't, you know, hold on to that, those cancellations. I move on. Okay. Next person. I'm not going to quit because I know why I'm doing this. Um, so if you say you can't, you won't. So just give, you know, keep trucking along and keep, um, you know, keep working. Just keep planting those seeds. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Number eight. Be proud and have passion, proud and passion of Wild Tree. It's your job. It's part-time income or we're your community or you're proud of Leslie and the company. It's a product line you represent. People need to see your name or see Wild Tree and associate each other. So if they see Wild Tree, they think of you. If they see you, they think, oh my gosh, she's my Wild Tree dealer. That's important. Because you don't want to be sharing something if you're not passionate and proud of it. And I think this is what I see the biggest like hang up with people is we're so afraid of like what this might look like if we're successful that instead of being so proud and passionate and just giving it a chance, everyone hides behind that. Oh, I like the products. So I, so I just joined because of that. Instead of saying like, I joined because the products are life changing for us. Like we love the freezer meals or I joined because I needed money and I met this amazing rep and she's super successful and she's been helping me every day since like be proud and passionate. And I mean that like from the bottom of my heart, otherwise, what are you doing here? If you're not proud of this company, even with some of the hard changes, if you've been around a few years, you know, the computer system hasn't been ideal. Stay tuned. Wink, wink. That's all I can say. Um, lots of good things are coming, but in the meantime, you just have to be proud, proud of what you do. I'm, I've never been prouder to be a part of this team, um, friends with Carissa and partnered with her and, and all of you that are on the call and all of you that are going to watch this playback. Um, I just get such a sense of, of pride and that makes me passionate about my work. So that's number eight. Number nine is team build. So, um, you know, what we were talking about earlier with Kayla's um, call or our call earlier this June and what tips we give, gave you for recruiting and hopefully you put those into play um, during this month, but um, team build. So 
what we kind of what we are thinking uh, for this uh, for July, just because, uh, and well, this should be not even just July. This should be all the time um, for team building. You should be having those recruiting conversations every single week. Like I said earlier, what my takeaway from Kayla was sometimes I was finding myself like waiting till like the last minute to like all of a sudden reach out to like 75 people about joining my team when, I mean, that's not really that effective. Um, so being more intentional, like I said earlier, and having those rec recruiting calls every week or conversations or however that looks like, um, you know, just maybe it's five people that I'm going to connect with during the week and just um, have a conversation about this opportunity and see where it would fit in their life. But I'm being more intentional about it every single week versus like, I'm going to wait till June 30th and then I'm just going to work on recruiting all day long, you know, and that can kind of get exhausting. So um, team build, you know, you're not going to be working harder when you start building a team. You're going to be doing the same amount of work and getting paid double. So um, just kind of keep that in mind. Yes. And then number 10, get ready for it. Are you ready? <laughs> be top in sales. No, I'm just kidding. That's not, that's <laughs> not it. It's be fearless. So recently in my, in my leadership group and in, in other places and, and people from all over wild trail reach out. Right. And I, I love to help anybody I can. So I set up a call and we get on the call and honestly, most of the time, whatever they're asking me can be simply solved with the words like, are you acting in fear? Or are you acting fearlessly out of passion and, and the pride that you have for a wild tree and the products and the opportunity? And so I would just tell you, like, you don't have to want to do a hundred parties a month. You don't have to want to have a team of 5,000. I don't care about any of that. Neither does Carissa. But what we're trying to get you to see is like, this industry is dog eat dog sometimes. And the difference between what I think Carissa and I have going on in our organizations and that is that I really try to love and serve from a place of like, it's okay if that recruit lead that I worked with for a while walks away. It wasn't meant for her. That's okay. I have a group of people sitting in front of me that are on this call that this was meant for. It's a real opportunity. Food is amazing. Wild Tree's food is incredible. You have to get on board with that and then you need to act with that, that, that intention that this is not going to be life or death if they say no to you. So ask them, why be afraid? Like, just go ask them. I just, I promise you good things are going to come to you if between now and conference, whether you're going or not, you just do these steps, work these steps, go back to your um, chicken list, the people you've been afraid to reach out to and ask them whatever you need from them, whatever you are thinking, however you think you can help them, just be honest with them. And, and, and talk to them and then go to your recruit leads, the ones that you have put off for six months because you were scared to talk to them again because they didn't get back to you. Ask them again and tell them you're following back up because that's your job. And then go back to the people that said they were going to place a reorder and never did and ask them. I did that this morning. I collected $72 in like two minutes by just simply saying, hey, I thought you were going to order this month. I was kind of a little bit worried because she just ordered last month, but she told me she was ordering this month and I asked her and boom. All different things than what she had ordered last time. Don't decide for people and act fearlessly. That's my, my last. Okay, call of action, Chris. So it's on the call. You do the call of action because I want it to be recorded. So we want you to take these 10 tips and we want you to shoot, shoot for some goals. Why is Chris, why are you laughing? <laughs> Her chicken scratch. Her oh. chicken. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Go on. Well, call to action. We just said we were having our next call July 19th at 8 30 p.m um we want you to push yourself outside of the box so the tips that we gave you push yourself outside the box with um you know um stop those self limitations stop those don't quit be fearless be proud um getting more in front of your customers and getting excited and get excited like really excited because 